What is up my friends, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the tenor trombone and also the bass trombone and chimbasa. We'll touch into those a little bit as well. But we're currently in our Orchestration Essentials uh, crash course and hopefully you've been enjoying the series so far. Thank you for sticking around if you have. Um, and yeah, I, we're going to be talking about more of the brass in this video. And uh, before we really get too deep into it, again, I want to give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. It goes over some very essential things you need to know in order to take your orchestrations and your mock-ups using virtual instruments to the next level. So sometimes a lot of amateur mock-ups have balance issues. There's things about the, the instruments not matching together in the same room and etc. So these are some things that I think are very important to internalize and understand when you go to create your next mock-up. So it's totally free. If you want to check the link in the box below, it'll take you straight there and you can download it as a gift for watching this video. So let's kind of dive into the tenor trombone. Um, it has great agility and dynamic range. Being one of the higher you know, trombone instruments, it tends to have more flexibility in what it can do. And also the dynamic range is just fantastic. So from like PP to FFF, it can really do it all, which is really cool. Um, a three trombone section has always been the standard. It's not like too, too, few, too few, but it's not too many where it kind of overwhelms the rest of the ensemble as well. I personally feel that the trombones are really good for chords and doubling. Um, also rhythmic patterns with trumpets, you know, they have a very brassy sound when played out loud or dynamic. So it makes sense that they layer with trumpets, which can also do the same thing and create a, a larger texture like that. Uh, the practical range is between E1 to B flat. Um, I think it has a couple, a few, few octave range. It can go pretty high, above, like a couple octaves uh, above middle C if you really wanted to. But the ideal range is from A1 to F3, just so you know. So it's like a two octave range or so. It has a cylindrical bore, which again means that there's a similar diameter throughout the entire pipe and it flares out at the end. So it creates that focused, bright and brassy sound like the trumpet. Now let's quickly talk about the bass trombone and the chimbasso. So the bass trombone is very solid and powerful throughout in terms of the sound. The range is from B flat zero to B flat three, so a three octave range. And the chimbasso um, is kind of like a mix between a trombone and a tuba, I think. So it kind of has like a sharp and bright sound and has pretty good projection like the trumpet and the trombone. The range in this instrument is from D minus one to F three, so it can go even lower than the bass trombone. <laughs> um, and then it gives extra punch to the trombones or overall brass section and reinforces the low end for the most part, which is really nice. Uh, granted, I don't actually use the bass trombone and the um, and the chimbasso too much in my scores. I, I really only use the tenor trombones and you know French horns, but I for the low end I'd like to use the tuba, which we'll touch on next time. Uh, what are some pros and cons to using the trombone? Uh, first of all, they have a very powerful and deep sound, uh, which we covered before due to their construction and sound projection. The tone can range from mellow and quiet to really loud and raspy, right? Again, being a cylindrical bore instrument, the softer dynamic can be very mellow and quiet, but the louder ones really get out there, you know? They really can, can shake the entire venue. They are really good in combination with the trumpet to fill out the lower range, which is really interesting. Now, it's not the most flexible instrument using the slide because it has to move back and forth. So you don't wanna write overly virtuosic lines for the trombone where, where they have to play like constant scales and stuff because it's really tiring. Whereas for like a flute, for example, they can just play different notes and it's really uh, a lot easier to do that. They spend a lot of the time practicing scales and stuff. Um, also the high notes are kind of difficult to produce. The low notes are more difficult to play quickly because of the farther positions, just to the nature of the instrument. So if you can get in touch with like a trombonist, um, it'd be nice to kind of ask them uh, what's, what's kind of common to write for them, what's maybe not so common, and get a sense of what they're kind of used to uh, for their playing. So my personal favorite ways to use the trombone are in anthemic pieces. I use them for stabs and staccatos to emphasize high energy moments. Um, you know, I, I don't use them too much for sustains if they are, uh, if the overall piece calls for a more exciting type of vibe to it. They can also perform sustained chords with French horns layered in for added texture. Of course, you could just use them on their own as well, but I kind of like the warmth of the French horns that they, you know, they, uh, they collaborate together and add together in a very beautiful way. It's also a very common instrument in big band and the slide makes it more virtuosic. So you can do like rips, you can do falls, you can do slides. All of that stuff, it's uh, it's really cool. And also you can use it in comical moments using like what like we said, the slide and etc. So very, very cool. 
Um, but yeah, definitely check out some music using the trombone. Um, lots of composers will just use it to you know enhance the low end of the brass and just give it some extra finesse and and uh, a touch of brightness as well being kind of similar to the trumpet you know it, it has those searing high oh, sorry searing loud um, notes that can really cut through the rest of the orchestra so if you're into that type of thing definitely use the trombone um, but just just be careful to give them breathing room as well you don't want to play too long lines without having room to breathe that's very important and also playing loud continuously can tire out the brass players as well so you don't want to write like fortissimo the entire time you want to give them some some breaks and also some quieter dynamics too so hopefully that makes sense and thank you so much for watching again let me know if uh, you use the trombone if so let me know how you use it in context in your own music and if you don't have it yet, remember to download the 10 Steps to a Clear Orchestral Sound Guide. It takes you through the very necessary essential tips that you need to know about the orchestra in order to understand it better and apply it to your mock-ups. So thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.